West Ham versus Newcastle, a very, very sort of quick turnaround here of games. Obviously, we're just on the back of a, a very, very big win over uh, Southampton, which took us from 19th place up to 14th. We now play in Newcastle. This is going to be a very different beast, I imagine, Riley. Um, I did feel that, I mean, just to quickly touch on the um, the Southampton game, obviously a vital win. I'm, for me, just more relief than anything. Um, I wasn't overly bowled over by the performance. It was OK, but it was, it was kind of what I expected to rubbish Premier League teams that are very low in confidence, very anxious fans. And it was just, an, it was just that, that kind of environment for me. It, it didn't feel very, it wasn't one of those games you walked away from going, oh yeah, we deserve that. We were really good. I just thought, right, we got the win because I think we were just the better side overall, you know, and, and Southampton were pretty shockingly poor actually. Um, but Newcastle, mate, on to Newcastle. Um, what's your feelings about this one? Uh, not overly confident, to be honest. I mean, like you say, after seeing the Southampton result, I mean, the only thing I can say about Newcastle, we'll probably go into that one with a little less nerves. So we mm. might, you know, be a little less uh, nervous on the ball. We might just sort of think to ourselves, look, it's Newcastle. They're fourth in the league. They're just beating Man United 2-0. What have we really got to lose? Just go out there and, and just win the game. See what you can do. It's a free hit. We're on 27, po- uh, 27 games. If, mm. if we lose it, if, you know, if we don't win it, if we don't pick up any points, then it is what it is. We've just got to beat the teams around us. But, with Southampton, the mindset more is like, you have to win this game. This is do or die. If you don't win this game, then, mm. you know, the, the club's basically in turmoil. So the only thing, the only positive for me is that maybe we'll approach this game with a little bit more, uh, much, yeah, it's a little bit more confidence. But how can you be confident against a side that is just so well drilled, so good and just possesses such dangerous players, uh, which I'm sure we'll go into in just a moment. But yeah, I'm not overly confident, but under the lights, you know, we've obviously you've got me, the Jinx, going to that game as well. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. How are you feeling about it, mate? Um, much like you, really. I'm. I'm. I mean, I'm probably not as nervous for the Southampton game because, like you say, the Southampton had it was a different feel. It was just a case if we had to get the result, we just could not afford to. Even a draw would have been a very, very bad result for West Ham. Very, very bad. So it, it had to be one. So whereas this one, like you say, you go okay. If we can get a point here, it's not the end of the world. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good result, actually. And we can then look forward to Fulham. There's a little bit of a different feel about it. And what I do like, I don't know whether it's just my my, my mindset, or whatever, but yeah, when we play under the floodlights at home, I always just feel there's an extra bit of buoyancy about us with the crowd. And it just seems to be a little bit more about us than when it's sometimes a Sunday afternoon, you know? Um, so that, I think that might play into our hands a little bit. But, you know, take nothing away from Newcastle. They've been great this season. They've been, Eddie Howe's got them really well drilled. They're a good side. And what I'm really impressed about with Newcastle is that they've, they've got all this investment, um, you know, from their new ownership. Uh, all right, it's been quite controversial and it's still sort of rumbling on. But they've not splashed a lot of money. They've not gone crazy. I know some people think they have. They haven't, really. They've not gone mad. And I think those days are kind of going anyway, I don't, because of the financial fair play, where they're trying to change these rules to stop these clubs spending so much money. So I've... But I just admire what Eddie Howe's done. He really has got them playing well. And I I actually started to think that they were the, the wheels are coming off a little bit this season with them. But um, the Newcastle, you know, sorry, the performance against Manchester United was was very good. Um, I think I th- I th- we're in for a very tough game, mate. I think we're in for a very hard game. But who knows? You know, I, I, as I said, like night, night, night lights and West Ham's always a good mix, I find. And also the fact that Newcastle have just come off a of, of, of back of a victory. Will they underestimate us a little bit, maybe? Will they come into this game thinking we should get this done and and, and maybe we'll, we'll raise our game? I don't know. But um, uh, but they're, they're sort of players to look for then, Riley. Anyone that sort of jumps to mind that you think, you, you who, one, you admire and two, West Ham have to be very careful of? I mean, St Maximan's an obvious choice. You know, we I've always said it, we really struggle against... Uh, direct players who run at you and and St Maxman is just one of the best in the league at that in my opinion he's got such good feet uh, the only positive is he, he's not really got a great shot on him but with people mm. like uh, Isaac in the box as well who I'm incredibly wary of we do struggle against really big physical strikers at times because I mean you, you would say to yourself stick a get on uh, Isaac but he's just such a strong powerful presence in the box mm. I just, you know, it's, it's going to be a big struggle. As well as that, Willock, he makes a lot of uh, late runs in the box, a bit like what Suchek used to do. I just don't think our midfield has the capability to track a runner like Willock effectively. Uh, so I think he'll be quite dangerous. Uh, yeah, those those are kind of the three that jump out for me. Obviously, got Almiron as well, whose purple patch seems to have kind of ended uh, mm. at the moment. So I guess he's worth mentioning. But yeah, for me, you got Bruno Guimaraes, who's 
probably one of the best midfielders in the league in terms of the the cog that just makes Newcastle tick. You've got Willock who makes dangerous runs at the edge of the box, which I just don't think our midfield... I mean, our midfield is really going to struggle in this game. That's the area where I'm most concerned about, um, especially if uh, Piquet is potentially injured, especially mm. if Suchek's going to be starting the game as well. I feel like we need someone like Downs to play just to get an actual foothold in the game because we are going to really struggle. Mm. Uh, but I guess one positive as well is that we're at home and they're away. So we, we do tend to play better at home. They do tend to play a little le- a little less good at, uh, away. Uh, but yeah, mm. for me, Sir Maximan will probably be like the number one threat just because I think we struggle so much against players that are direct against us. We really just tend to back off against them. And I don't yeah. really trust Kera or Sufal going up against him. Yeah, I, think, I I agree. I think it's well, Sir Maximan is always an issue. Like it's just, as you say, his pace is just frightening and, and um, yeah, it does worry me. The idea of Kira, I mean, I'm probably be more confident with Sue Fowl on him, to be honest, with the experience. Kira just worries me a lot. Um, although I would say he, he did play okay against Southampton. He was all right. And I thought, he, you know, obviously he was very good for the, for the delivery of the goal. But um, no, I, I agree. Uh, Gamerez, for me, he's the one, I think he sort of like, he, he runs the show a little bit for them. I think when, when he's on form, he can really create a lot of problems and, I think that's something that West Ham midfield just had to be so on. And, you know, this is one that one of the games we're going to need Declan Rice um, and Paqueta really to be really on their top game because I think that's where the game will probably be won is in that midfield. I think if we can if we can win that battle, then we could really cause them problems. Um, the issue I've got with West Ham on this one, mate, is that I just don't know. I, I, was, I was at the Southampton game on Sunday. The situation up front is confusing me a lot. I don't really understand what Moyes is doing. Um, he's playing a system for, to, 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 you know, we're playing Danny Ings as the number one um, striker now, it appears. He's his number one man. And the system just doesn't work for him at all. Like, it just, we don't, it, I, I just don't understand it. Like he's expecting Danny Ings to run channels and to put pressure on defenders. It's just not his game at all. And that's, that's Antonio's game. And it, it just, it just doesn't work. I just can't believe he went for so long waiting for it. And you could just see um, Danny Ings getting so frustrated in the game because he, I remember a couple of occasions when he did receive the ball, he turned as if to sort of say, right, I need someone to lay this off to, to do something. And no one's ahead of him. Effectively, we're saying, go on, Danny, go and run at him. And he's like 40 yards from goal. And you can just see he's just not his game. He's just running, thinking, I'm waiting for someone to come and take the ball off me, which is happy. it happened a couple of occasions. Um, that's my concern about this game. I just think Moyes has really got to stop this, um, you know, just get his selections right. Start playing players for the best of ability. Stop just playing players for the name on their shirt or the fact you just bought them. Oh, I've got to play him. Just think, hang on, what sort of system do we need to play? If we want to play a game where we're going to be... Um, playing a counter-attack side. You need pace up front and power. You've got to go with Antonio. I appreciate he's not a great finisher and, and that's where Ings is better. But then try and accommodate the both then. Do something else. Don't just keep chucking Ings on, hoping he can do that. Um, and obviously, we've got the Skamaka situation, which I just I don't really know what's going on. I think X is going to provide an update. It looks like he would, he had a scan on his knee again. I don't know. An- another injury that we're, we're having to, to, to ride through. But um, yeah, um, it, it's going to be a strange game, this one. But one, I've, I've, strangely, I've, I've, I'm more looking forward to than I was Southampton. Considering the fact this is a team that's in fourth or third now and West Ham, we were playing a team at the bottom of the league. I'm more comfortable going to this one. Because like you, I just think I've got a feeling that the, the players and, and even the fans will probably go into this thinking, well, look, we ain't got much to lose here. Let's just go and try and enjoy the day. Um, whereas Sunday was just like a you know a long long hour and a half of football, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I've got to say to you then, Riley, or ask you, sorry. Um, what what's your predictions for this one? You always ask me first, mate. You do. You I, I've noticed that with you, uh, but <laughs> uh, I do think we'll lose. I think Newcastle are just in in that kind of form at the moment. Uh, I I do think we'll have a good go of the game. I think the majority of the game is going to be a draw. I don't think we'll be chasing too much, but. Uh, I do think we're going to lose two one. Uh, I just, I just, yeah, I just think that midfield is just so. I just have no faith in us to win the midfield battle. And I just, again, where are the where are the goals going to come from? Uh, I, you know, Newcastle are just so well drilled. They're not going to be, you know, we've got two options. We either try and play counter attack to them like they do us, in which case I I don't think we'll be able to do that. A because mm. we don't have the players for a counter attack sort of football at the moment. And B, just because I think Newcastle just do it better than us. You know, we're just going to get lost out. And, and with our backs to goals, uh, we're just going to get picked apart. So then, you know, we have to sort of drop back and and, and pen in and, and not allow Newcastle to play that game. But then mm. they're just going to drop back. And, and when they do that, 
there's no way we, we're getting in the box. There's no way we're scoring a goal uh, doing that because it's just not how we like to play football. So, uh, yeah, for me, I just think we're going to lose this one, unfortunately. Yeah, I I, 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 I I do understand where you're coming from and I've been leaning towards that a little bit. However, I've got a sneaky feeling we're going to draw this game. Um, I, I'm actually going to go for a goalless draw. I think it's going to be nil-nil. But I just, I just think it, I, that's my gut feeling. And that's probably, I'm probably going slightly more with my heart there on that. But I just think that uh, I'd like to think that we've got a bit of confidence about us now from Southampton. I think that's a big weight off our mind. And although it's only a matter of a couple of points here and there, I think it does something to just look at a table and go, oh, look, we're not in the bottom three. We're, we're actually 14th now. We're starting to pull away. I think it might just breathe a little bit of life into us. And let's be honest, mate, let's just say West Ham are to beat Newcastle. I appreciate it's, it's looking a little bit doubtful at the moment in terms of where they are and where we are. But if we are to beat them, arguably you could say West Ham are all but safe in a sense, because you could say, well, you've, you've now got 30 points with 10 games to go. You have only really need to get another six or seven points from your last 10 games and you should be OK. Um, so it's a really big opportunity for us. I really hope that West Ham really, the players and the, the management understand how, how great an opportunity this is. Um, and, and then you never know, like I alluded to earlier, maybe that um, Newcastle will go into this game and be feeling a little bit I don't know, a bit cocky about it, thinking, well, we don't really have to do too much here. We can get a result. West Ham, you know, they're nowhere near our level this season. So I don't know. I don't know what to expect. But I think it's going to be a, a certain interesting ride. And, and you can, but the only problem is, if we do lose to Newcastle, the pressure then comes back on again. The calls for Moyes to go come out again. It's, it's, that, that could happen. So, um, yeah, it's going to be certainly be an interesting one. 